Yeah, I'll call to order the uh, March 22nd AMAS Policy Committee meeting. It's one o'clock. I'd like to go through and note that all members are present and accounted for today, with the exception of Mr. Sullivan, who is being served in proxy by Mr. Vicalis. We do have a quorum. Mr. Chairman, if I might uh, introduce uh, our Mr. Burge and my colleague, Adam Trombley, who represents the east side of Anchorage on the Assembly. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Patrick. Public involvement announcement. All of the AMAS meetings are public meetings. The public is given an opportunity to comment uh, on all items. The uh, way we do that is if there's a business item, we'll have staff or consultants present on an item. The committee will then be given an opportunity to discuss it, and then the public will be given an opportunity to talk and comment. So, okay. Thank you. We have before us an agenda. Do we have any last minute corrections, Mr. Lyons? Or Good to go as far as you know. I believe it's good to go. Any comments from the committee? Corrections, modifications, no comments. We'll move forward to this agenda. First item is approval of last month's minutes. Thank you, approve you for getting those in, correct? You bet. Second. Moved and seconded. I have a correction. Is that which has a correction wow. you'd like to bring forward? I, I actually wasn't in attendance at the last meeting, City Hall side for me. So that just needs to be changed in the uh, members attending. Okay. We felt your presence. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Any further corrections? Any objection to that amendment to the minutes? Any objection to adopting the minutes? No objection. We will adopt these minutes with that one correction as noted. Business items for the 2035 MTP, do we have an update or? Uh, I don't know if Gary was going to planning on any update, but as far as I know, the only update is that it's still scheduled for April 10th as a public hearing at the assembly. And uh, I believe we're just ready to roll and waiting on that. I don't know if you have anything else besides that, Gary, but that's what I know. Um, Gary Cancy and Kittleson and Associates. I guess the only other thing they add is that we did have a work session with the assembly on March 9th. And, uh, is well attended and got a lot of good comments back and forth. So. And, and Mr. Chairman, I just added that. I think you can expect the, the series of assembly amendments from members who are present at that session. Okay. And if I could just add to that, it's up for public hearing and action on yeah. that date to yeah. make the timeline. Yep. So. Okay. <clears throat> and those would be a series of recommended amendments. Right. <laughs> we we have spent some time clarifying that with, with some of the members present. Great. Okay. Well, we always want to hear input, so we look forward to those suggestions. Okay. Bike and pedestrian advisory committee bylaws. Is this you, Mr. Lyon? I will start and uh, let Erica McConnell uh, do most of the heavy lifting there, since so she's the one doing the heavy lifting on this. Uh, this is a committee uh, that would uh, be created and serve as an advisory committee to the AMATS Technical Committee and the Policy Committee. Um, it's been uh, something that has been suggested for a while. A lot of MPOs around the country have these creatures uh, that uh, look at those sorts of issues and provide input. Um, and so we just recently had a work session and a TAC meeting to discuss this. So I'll let Erica, if she wants to add any more to that or give any details, um, you have those bylaws, they've been vetted at those at committee, and uh, that's what you have before you is the opportunity to discuss those and hopefully approve them. Thank you. I'll just let you know that um, we started with the bylaws that were used for the freight advisory committee, and we looked at um, bylaws from some example bike and ped committees around the country and just added a, a couple of things. And then, as Craig mentioned, the, the TAC did hold a work session and made some really good uh, changes, particularly to the um, content of the 11 members that would serve on the committee. Thanks. Okay. Any testimony from the public on this? Comments, questions? Any members? Mr. Gales? Yeah, just a comment. Uh, you know, when we when we did Title IX, we just recently revised Title IX, uh, in there, as you know, there's a large section on bicycles. And one of the proponent agencies that had an awful lot of input into that title was the police department, um, primarily for safety reasons and everything else. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, when I look up the makeup here, is that something that we think might be of uh, benefit or not? 
The um, original proposal that staff brought forward to the TAC did include a member from the police department as well as um, a couple other members from uh, municipal government. And what the TAC recommended was that there be no governmental entities actually sitting on the committee, but that um, governmental entities that, that could be useful um, in the discussion, such as the police department, would be regularly invited um, to, to support the committee. Okay, with, with the exception of the, the school yeah. district kind of being not the same as, as the rest of us. I guess to that point, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you look at paragraph 2.1.6 on page 2, can you include APD as an advisory agency to assist in the deliberations? I think one of the things that came up in the discussion, and, and Cindy or Jennifer can, or Steve could clarify that for you, but I think some of the discussion was whether or not, I, know, I guess I shouldn't use waste their time as a suggestion, but whether or not we're going to have those, uh, those kind of specialized people, uh, traffic department or traffic unit at APD involved on a regular basis, and a lot of the issues that would come up before this committee might have nothing to do with that. And so the idea was, I think, and again, they can clarify, the idea was when we have something that comes up that really relates to that, we make sure that, uh, you know, Sergeant Dahl or somebody like that from APD is at the meeting so they can offer their expertise and their, their insight there. But otherwise, if we're talking about, you know, which trails, which recreational trails we might want to build or something like that, that may not drag their interest in as much. The rest of the committee would be more interested in that. So we definitely want them there. We were thinking that they would be more as staff to the committee um, at certain times when those issues came up. Definitely want them involved. Mr. Chairman, I have a different question I'd like to sure. pose up. And I appreciate the background that the Freight Advisory Committee was kind of the basis for this. And mm -hmm. my recollection is that's a five member committee? How eleven. Many? It's eleven? Yeah. Wow, because when I was on the Freight Advisory Committee, we never had anywhere close to 11 members present. I'm just thinking this might be a little bit too large a committee. Not that I don't want a broad, broad variety of viewpoints, but I just get worried that it becomes unwieldy when it's this size. I was looking through here, a quorum is a majority of six. Six. Yeah. six people show up. Yeah, I'm not even sure we ever even had six show up. <laughs> I think they maybe do better now, but. We do all right. Yeah. We get a quorum. You get a quorum. That's good. I just, I don't know. Jay, something to I think we've got a lot of kind of questions on this. Maybe I didn't do my homework thoroughly, but I haven't thought about this a whole lot before today, I'll admit. Um, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong here in the statement, but is the thinking that this would act as an advisory committee to the TAC primarily and have a person on the TAC? Correct or in line? Uh, there wouldn't be a member of this freight committee on the TAC. The I'm, I'm, I'm on this committee, just like the freight committee, there isn't a member of that person, that, that group on, on the TAC. It would just be when these sorts of issues came up, we would discuss it at the freight committee or the bike and ped committee, and they would bubble that recommendation, similar to what we do with the air quality committee. Well, this is going to be a regular, I mean, this, this committee is going to meet every quarter, yes. so they're going to be doing something, I mm -hmm. assume. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to be called when there's an issue. Right. They're going to be doing right. something. What is their work product they're going to be generating for us on a quarterly basis, I guess, is kind of my question. Well, we left it kind of wide open to see what the interest of the, of the committee was, but if you look in the um, preamble in the A through G about all the possible things they could be doing, I mean, there's working on um, making sure that the bike and the ped and the trails plan are implemented there's um, public education components i think we would all agree that there's a need for some public education particularly um, between the the bicycle and the vehicular communities that there can there's some um, rubbing there that that you see played out in the letters to the editor in the paper um, when it's time to uh, you know redo the the tip looking at the evaluation criteria and helping to evaluate the um, non-motorized projects that are included. Uh, you could say the same thing for when the next um, MTP is done. Um, and and then if they, you know, as a group come up with other ideas, I mean, I think one of the, my roles as a staff member would be to look around the country and see what other committees are doing and bring those ideas to this committee to see what interests them. So, you know, as I, as I read this, a little bit more closely. I mean, I could almost 
speak this two different ways. So is the intent that this is kind of a subcommittee or it's a committee off to the side of the tech committee and they report to the tech committee. The tech committee analyzes that and they'll make a recommendation, yay, nay, or whatever, based on input from uh, this bicycle committee. Or does this bicycle committee, uh, bicycle slash pedestrian committee, make their recommendations directly to the policy committee? Because you can read it either way, either way here. Well, the, the way we have all of our other committees set up is every single committee, the and planning and zoning and the assembly, everyone's advisory to the policy committee. The policy committee is final arbiter, they make the decisions. All of our other committees, they get funneled through the TAC because typically what happens is we'll get an item here to the policy committee and you folks will say, what did the TAC think about it? So we always have our decisions that come from the uh, air quality committee or the freight committee or the technical or this bike and pet committee would do the same way would come through the TAC and it would be vetted there and then it would come up to you folks so that's how we envision it I mean they're all everyone's advisory to the policy committee but we shuttle things through the TAC so they can okay but that's not clear here thing. because it says if, if they could even funnel directly to the AMAX policy committee or to the technical I, committee. I think part of the reason for that or just that that also gives us the flexibility of sending something directly to bike and ped as opposed to through the TAC. I mean, it, it basically advise both bodies, the TAC and the policy committee, but as a matter of practice, we ask them to funnel things back up through the TAC. This, this language uh, here is pretty similar to what's in the freight, which was itself patterned off, the, off of the air quality stuff. So in practice, the way it works is stuff comes through the TAC and then to you. So we're happy to modify this language, tweak it a little bit if you want to clarify it, but that's how things seem to work in practice. Was freight, does freight have a seat on the TAC? Did you not even through the advisory? The air quality is the only one right now that has an actual seat on the TAC. And, and that's partly because I mean, air quality is, that's the hammer, that's, that's why we're, a big reason why we're in business. That's why we have our the CMAC funds relate to air quality. That's why all along air quality has representation on the policy committee. So they really need to be on the TAC as well. Well, I guess from my perspective, I'm not terribly excited about creating a committee which has apparently no stated purpose, no particular mission to accomplish, to solve a problem that we don't know exists. Having said that, if it's the will of this board to promote this committee, <laughs> I will not stand in the way of it. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, as we see you know, more and more alternative methods of transportation in the Anchorage Bowl in particular, um, I think having some folks who are more focused on, on motorized transportation would be useful. Uh, and they would probably see things that you or I might not. Uh, and so those extra eyes, I think, would be helpful. Do we know Are you making a motion? I would move to approve the bylaws as drafted by the, as recommended by the TAC. I'll right. second. Okay, do we now have any formal discussion on the motion? Which we care to make? Uh, I have a rhetoric question. Perfect. So do we have a dog sled committee too? Well, it's not covered. <laughs> uh, but my my uh, my you comment is you're a member from the dog side. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think my comment would be um, if you have a committee that is looking at pedestrian or bicycle uh, issues, and if it's not very clear that they do report to the tech committee, because the, the technical committee has to take a look at this in the in the whole, and they're advising us technically. And so you get a recommendation separately, say, from uh, the, the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee. It comes to us, which it can, uh, under the way it's written here. Um, and then all we're going to do is end up sending it right back to the Technical Committee, make sure there's no conflicts with anything else that they have to analyze. So, you know, just for the sake of trying to make it clear, it would just seem to me that it makes it makes more sense that at least they report to uh, the technical committee. We can always ask for a separate report from them, but it would just seem to me that to make this thing a coordinated effort, to make sure that it makes all, meets all the aspects and, and the technical aspects that we expect the technical committee to uh, basically recommend, make recommendations to us on, 
let it go to them. That's all. Like right here, it just can be, it can go either or. And I understand what we've done it by practice, but I don't know that that's documented. That's, all. that's the only comment I can make. Let me uh, propose that perhaps that we could have a separate motion that clarifies that all advisory committees are to route through the technical committee, whether it's the bicycle committee, whether it's the air quality committee, or whether it's the freight advisory committee. I think it's appropriate for all of those committees to have that chain of reporting. If you'd like, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to prepare an amendment to our policy and procedures to the policy committee. Get that, make, that make, make it a blanket statement as opposed to going to each of these and amending them. I think that'd be fine to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I can do that. Great. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion before us. Do we have any other discussion? Mr. Birch, do you have any further discussion you care to make? Mm -hmm. Mr. Birch, I, I guess the only thing I, I would add is I think, you know, the non-motorized aspects of our transportation system are important. We we have, you know, we get advice on freight, we get advice on air quality, and it seems like this would be an appropriate, appropriate focus for a group of individuals in this community to be working on that and giving us that advice. Thank you. Anybody from the crowd on the motion before us? Can I just add one thing? Sure. Uh, my thought is we have three uh, places where we spend our money around in terms of the allocation. And you have roadways, you have CMAC, and you have transportation enhancement. So the feds, have, it, they seem to be pretty clear that they want that to be a priority for us. And so, and obviously the latest different, different uh, suggestions related to authorization and reauthorization legislation are showing an emphasis in that area so I think it would uh, it would uh, look uh, it would show the feds that we are paying attention to this and we are making it a priority okay thank you uh, I guess that at this point I'll call for a show of hands all in favor of the motion raise their hand so, anyone opposed okay it passes unanimously thank you for the discussion any other business items that have appeared miraculously before us? No, no, I have none. Okay. On informational reports, upcoming construction project status. Who is going to be helping us with that? Uh, I don't think we have any, anyone actually presenting, but we do have this one single page that says, that says AMATS TAC, March 8, 2012. This is what was presented back uh, at that, that meeting related to the municipal projects that are coming up in 2012. So that gives you an update on that. Um, okay. Well, the other thing you probably could mention is that there is a meeting set up for all entities. Um, remember, there's a meeting set up with the state and everybody else that basically does road work so that we can coordinate our efforts. And that's coming up here, what is it, April? I think so. I can yeah. find out and send that around to the... Just, just so everybody just knows right. that there is an annual meeting that we get everybody together. It's right here at the bottom. Oh, okay, okay, May 3rd. Okay. That's the one that we generate our nice map from. Mm -hmm. It has all the projects color-coded. Yeah. And we try to conflict everything. Yeah. yeah. I have a question on, on that. Um, there's some discussion about um, an improvement to, I, I want to say 88th, which is just north of my assembly district, but it's it would be in, mid, I think it's Midtown, just north of Abbott. And there's some, uh, I remember in Girdwood, we had some issue about who, who, when you build something, who ultimately maintains it. And there's, there's kind of, I, I seem to remember there's kind of a dust up over over that, at least in some pro projects around Girdwood, that the bridge, the Crow Creek Bridge, and I know we, we kind of circle around, I think we came up to, do we have any projects proposed for next summer that are, are tangled up, if you will, with a, uh, uh, you know, with the, who's gonna maintain it after it's built, irrespective of where it's funded? Okay. Well, way, go ahead, so uh, on 88, that's probably okay. the one that- That's the one that popped up. up. That's the yeah. one that popped up, and that's, probably the only one that I know of right now. Okay. Um, 88th, uh, we basically have, have uh, requested uh, through the um, legislators uh, that provided the two increments of funding for the project, which was not enough, by the way. Uh, we have officially gone back to them and asked them to reappropriate the money to uh, state DOT to go ahead and do the projects. Okay. Uh, the problem we have is that we received, I think it was a million dollars, and we received another three million dollars for a total of four, and the project cost is around eight million, uh, if you put every single thing, every amenity into it. Uh, and looking at it, uh, it was felt that it'd have a better chance of getting done sooner uh, if uh, the state took the project. 
So to add on to that, I will say that our project is going to be a little bit less enhancement oriented than perhaps the municipal project would have been. And uh, we've discussed that with Senator Meyer, who was the primary yep. sponsor of this uh, reappropriation language. And, and I guess in general, the project itself is his concern. So yeah. we'll be moving forward with that pending uh, either the money being reappropriated legislatively or transferred to us by the municipality. So okay. we'd expect to have a project manager assigned in the next couple of months to it and start moving forward at that point. Is, is that going to go straight through? It's got that wicked little, isn't 88 the one with that wicked We are not jack. building a new road. We are just rebuilding that little piece, the last half a mile okay. between Abbott, or I mean between Elmore and Outer Where it takes that Yeah, Outer Creek takes a kind of a 90 degree turn down there. I, I, all AMAX projects are within Arson, right? Uh, there, there uh, no, there's some out in the uh, Eagle River. Oh, right. Or Arson or Subversa. So those, uh -huh. are, those are the maintaining agencies. Yes. Once you get, unless it's a state owned road, in which case. Right. Yeah, 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 this portion is. Yeah. 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 It's one of and, and sometimes in the anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a different question. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you for that. Cause I, I was in general yeah. for a couple of days last week yeah. and actually it was Senator Meyer that, uh, that you know, kind of. But on, on the bridge that you talked about, if I may, mm -hmm. the bridge in, in Girdwood that you, mm -hmm. you mentioned. So this is kind of, uh, it's an odd situation because quite frankly, the city doesn't own it and state DOT is not responsible for it. Uh, there, what, which agency is it? It's the Forest uh, Service. Forest Service is Forest responsible Forest for it, yeah. and we do know that the the bridge, uh, you know, is failing. But uh, in that particular case, it's actually a Forest Service responsibility. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Good interest. <laughs> Might lay like claim to that myself and start charging toll. There you go. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, Right along. Uh, I will I will say that we don't have a list here of state projects, but I know that both the New Seward Highway, basically from Tudor Road to Dowling, and uh, the Dowling Road west of the old Seward Highway would be under construction this year. Those are both large, uh, federally funded, state-operated projects, so those will be the two that I'm aware of will have a significant impact in traffic in town here this summer on everybody, probably. Take this one. Yeah. <laughs> idea. Okay, what's next on our agenda here? We've got uh, public review okay. and public review of the carbon monoxide and PM10 <coughs> air quality conformity determination. Horace is here too. Hopefully we'll a quick spiel on it. No, just very briefly, just wanted to this is an informational item that the TAC did release the air quality determination uh, analysis uh, uh, for public review, 30-day public review. I believe the 30-day comment period ends on April 9th. Um, prior to releasing the conformity determination, it went through the required interagency consultation. So we've, we've discussed this with DOT, DEC, Federal Highways, EPA, and they've all taken a look at it. I think they're all fairly comfortable with it. We made a couple of uh, minor changes to the draft before it was released. Um, the, uh, I guess the good news is that uh, the, the analysis shows that we do meet conformity requirements. The uh, carbon monoxide emissions that are estimated to come from the, uh, the Metropolitan Transportation Plan as envisioned through 2035 were under the allowable emissions budget for carbon monoxide. And then for PM10, we actually have a much less stringent way of looking at that now that we, than we used to because it's been so long since we violated the standards. But that too, <coughs> meets conformity requirements out in Eagle River. So we have a non-attainment, or we have a maintenance area for carbon monoxide in the Anchorage Bowl and a actually still technically a non-attainment area for PM10 out in Eagle River. But um, the good news is things uh, that, that we do show conformity. There was one issue they should be aware of a little bit uh, as far as the carbon, the carbon monoxide conformity determination was a closer call maybe than it should have been. And we think there's some problems with the MOVES model that the EPA is mandates for the analysis. We've talked to them about that. The state's talked to them about that. Hopefully we'll get that resolved before we have to do this again. But um, but the good news is that uh, even with that problem, um, we can show conformity. Just, do we have any questions? I, I, I just did have a quick question. I mean, obviously it's been a while since we violated the PM10 uh, standards. What, what's the 
timeline for moving from a non-conformity zone. Non uh, kind of unbelievable. Let's <laughs> 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 just say I, I hope I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> but they, we, we're still, as I said, we're still in the process. The EPA is still reviewing the plan, the maintenance plan, so that hasn't been approved. But once the maintenance plan is approved, and I expect that will be in the next year or so. Uh, it's a 20-year process. So we'll be a maintenance area for PM10 for the next 20 years. So it's a long, long process. Wow, kind of like we're a maintenance. Unless they have rules change, yeah. Well, how long have we been under a maintenance plan for the bowl on carbon? I think that was approved in 2004. So 2024, in theory, we could uh, get out of that maintenance designation. Unbelievable. Job security for Mr. Morton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not here. I do have another question for you, if you don't mind. Um, on the on the model you referred to, it seemed like in the last year or so we changed models, and I seem to recall there was a fairly significant change in the amount of carbon that was generated based on the new model assumptions. And in the past, it had seemed like we had a huge amount of head headroom, or we're going to call it, right. between what we were generating and what our limit was. Is, it, is what you're saying that now that cap has shrunk, or are you saying there's a technical problem in the model? Well, the cap has shrunk. The cap has shrunk because there's a technical problem in the model. Uh, if that makes any sense, <laughs> when we forecast in the yeah. future, it, it, at what we think, and at, at EPA, I think, largely acknowledges this, that there's an issue that the, the emissions, uh, starting emissions for vehicles. Typically, you'll, you, you see a decline in the starting emission rate for vehicles over time. You expect to as mm -hmm. there's emission control improvements Technology. and that sort of thing. But uh, between, if you look at the start, what the model projects for starting emissions at very cold temperatures like we're modeling, the 2007 emission rate is almost the same as the 2035 emission rate. And so we're saying, this doesn't look right. And we've asked them to look at that, or DEC has asked them to look at that. But is the actual headroom between, I mean, I don't know if you could ignore this factor that you're talking about, the startup mm -hmm. load, whatever, but did we actually lose some of our comfort zone, if you will, under this new model or not? Is it well, sense? If, you, if you took a snapshot at 2007 with the MOVES model and a snapshot of 2007 with the Mobile 6 model, the amount of headroom would be the same, okay. essentially. The problem is when you project out to 2035. Okay. All right. I find that I think what you're trying to do is reassure me that it's not gloom and doom, that if we can get this technical thing fixed, that we will still be in reasonable compliance. There, yeah, there's actually a couple of paths. There's an, also a plan that we've begun discussing with EPA and DEC. It's, the, it's, it's called the limited maintenance plan, which actually allows you to eliminate this emission budget process entirely. So if we were to, of course, that requires another revision of the carbon monoxide plan. But uh, that's how many years does that take? Pardon me? How many years would that take? Uh, well, to, to, to do a new plan? Yeah. Six months. To uh, to get it approved, it might take another two years. More than that. Yeah. All right. Two years. Thank you. Okay, I guess we've reached the part uh, around the room where we have committee comments. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Chairman, I remember one time after a meeting you asked me if some, somebody's seat on the AMAS committee was uh, punishment or reward. <laughs> I, I would note Mr. Trombley didn't even make it halfway through <laughs> That may speak for itself. Um, the other thing is uh, we have an election next month, and by uh, charter, the assembly will reorganize following that meeting. I don't think that will be done prior to the next policy committee meeting, but if it is, and if I'm no longer on the body, it's been a, a joy, and if I am, then I'll see you then. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Birch? Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Michaelis? No comment. Ms. Edward? I don't have anything to say. I guess I'm going to blessedly keep the meeting short as well. So our next um, technical advisory committee is April 12th, policy April 26th. Uh, I guess it will be of some note that April 26th will be after the legislature adjourns, so we may have some interesting discussions at that point based on, on how things turn out there. And we've got our, uh, you said our assembly presentation is on the 10th yes, for the, uh, for the, the for opening of the MTP on the 10th. Okay, I guess that's it. Unless anybody has any objections, we are now.